Kaui Rural, which is where I'm based. We're volunteers, we uh, train once a week. We've also got a sister station up in New Plymouth and they do once a fortnight at the moment but they'll probably be going to weekly as the fire season comes in. So we do get busier in summer when the weather's hotter and drier and people are lighting rubbish fires and that sort of thing. Um, so we like to train more frequently to accommodate that need. Yeah, we're volunteers primarily and we give one night a week to training and then we come out to fire calls whenever we're available. And we also send a lot of people overseas on deployment. So on the urban side of the coin, um, basically, you know, what people see is the big red fire trucks, normally first response. Um, we've only got one paid fire station here in Taranaki, which is New Plymouth, and all of the other 18 fire stations are all volunteers. Um, so, you know, they're in all the smaller communities, uh, people have their day jobs, and when that siren goes off, they drop what they're doing, and off they go to, to save the day, essentially. In, in Hauru here, we're quite a busy brigade, um, so, uh, don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I'm thinking it's around 300 odd calls a year. Um, of course, not all of those are houses on fire or buildings on fire. It could be cats stuck up a tree. Um, we go to any, what the ambulance call a purple call, so a life-threatening medical call, heart attacks, CPRs, things like that. We go to all of those, and quite often we're first on scene. And when they've been looking at the stats, we've been making a huge difference because we've got defibrillators on our truck, we've got trained people from first aid, we can turn up and you know make a good difference on that. One of the big things we're looking at today is our four metre by four metre access. So being a predominantly rural show, we're looking at access into properties. Can we get up the driveway? If we can't get up the driveway, we can't help people. So you know having room for a big boxy fire truck to get up a driveway, when we get there we want water supplies. So our fire trucks, the big red fire trucks, only hold 2,000 litres. Um, this one's about 1,000 litres. Um, so it doesn't do much when it comes to firefighting. So and when we've got fire hydrants on the road, nice and easy, we've got an unlimited supply of water. But in rural properties, we really need access to swimming pools, water tanks. We can pull water out of just about any water source. We need to be able to get to them, and we need to be able to get to them safely. So our firefighters need to be able to get their pumps down to a riverbank or whatever without risk of falling in. We've got our kitchen fire demonstrator later on today. So basically, we're going to set fire to our kitchen and show people some simple ways they can deal with this at home uh, and then what not to do. So what we're demonstrating is unattended cooking. So we've got a pot of oil on the stove and we're ignoring it. Uh, unfortunately when that happens things catch fire. So we're going to demonstrate some safe ways to put that out. So there's about two centimetres in that pot so maybe a cup or a bit more than a cup of oil just plain cooking oil. Unfortunately Lots and lots of our fires start in the kitchen and we've had quite a few cooking all fires here in Hawara lately So some of the other things we want to be aware of today you can see we've got our big four meter by four meter banner here That's how much room we need to get up your driveway with a fire truck So that's just one of those things to be aware of um, Other things if you live rurally make sure we can get to your water tank or your swimming pool Because our fire trucks have only got 2,000 litres of water and that's about four minutes of firefighting Oh, you can see someone's just told me my pot's caught fire. We just grab our pot lid. We put our pot lid on. We turn our heat off. Problem solved, fire's going away. If you like your eyebrows, don't take the lid off. It's still burning away there. We can safely use something like an oven tray. Pop lid on, turn the heat off, and leave it there. Don't be tempted to pick it up and move it because otherwise you'll burn yourself. We're getting more and more smoke. You can see this black smoke coming through here. Now all that is is cooking oil burning. If your house is actually on fire, that smoke's a whole lot more toxic. Two breaths of a house fire smoke is enough to kill you. So if I try and demonstrate with this again now. So at this point, you can't deal with this at home. I can guarantee you if you pick that up and walk with it, all you're gonna do is set everything else on fire in your house. Demonstrate now why we do not put water on a cooking oil fire. So remember that's one cup of oil and we've got a little spoonful of water there basically.
So you can see that if that was your kitchen and you've walked straight up to it, you've now chucked water straight on your cooking oil fire and that's now spread burning oil all over you, all over your kitchen and all over everything on your bench. Because at home, your whole kitchen's probably not made out of stainless steel. You've probably got tea towels sitting there somewhere. You've probably got a spice rack with spices on it. You've got all sorts of things that will burn. So make sure you've got those smoke alarms, make sure they're working, and make sure you just remember what's going on in your kitchen. Just pay attention. Keep looking while you're cooking, and just be aware of everything.